All right, so we've been getting some requests that people want to see Crokinole by uh, the non-professional athletes uh, of the world. That was very nice. Wasn't it though? <laughs> I try to sugarcoat things a little bit. So today we have uh, my good friend Barney Kunsi here today. Bonjour. Bonjour. He's no, not French, he I'm just not. pretends. Anyway, the upside of having Barney here is as I mentioned he is non-professional so I'm going to be giving him a refresher on the rules and then we're going to play a little bit and then we're also going to implement some of the uh, some of the field leveling techniques that we talked about a couple of videos ago when you've got a, a really strong player playing against a less experienced player. Um, the downside of having Barney here is apparently some people can't tell us apart. We used to work together, we both have bald heads. People say, oh is that Barney, is that Jeremy? But it's now easier than ever because if you ever run into one of us in the street and wonder who it is, your litmus test, your question you ask is, is he wearing a crokinole shirt? If he is, it's probably me. If it's not, it's probably Bernie. That'd anyway. Be, that'd be a good distinguishing factor. Well, yeah. i just get you a crokinole shirt and then even that's it. But that would be harder. All right. So, you played the game before, being yeah. a good rural Ontario boy. Yeah. Uh, you grew up playing crokinole, but yeah, it's my understanding. You're not really fresh I, up to No, rural. like I can make some action happen on the board, but right. I don't really know what I'm doing. All right. Yeah. So what, what we're going to start with is we each have eight discs. Yeah. And right in front of you is your shooting quadrant. Every time you shoot, your disc needs to be touching the shooting line somewhere within your quadrant. You can come all the way over to here as long as you're touching your quadrant line or all the way over to here. Yeah. And that's where you shoot from. Yeah. Uh, the other the rule that people get super excited and amused by is the one cheek rule. You're allowed to move around in your chair, but one portion of your posterior, posterior needs to remain in contact with the chair as you shoot. Now, when it's your shot, if there are none of my buttons on the board, you need to play to the middle. So your disc needs to end up within or at least touching that circle. If I do have a button on the board, you have to make contact with that button. Okay. That's the gist. That's the nuts and bolts. We may get into some more scenarios as we rock and roll so here. One, one cheek on the chair. One cheek on the chair. Okay. All right. So now, uh, if you want to take some practice shots, I'd recommend you set a button up there. And then you want to have your hand anchored, so not free floating, have your hand anchored, have your finger nice and close to the button, so it's more of a push than a strike. There you go. Okay. You're an old pro. There you go. And just keep taking some shots. Yeah, just take some practice shots. And what what is the like with the whole thing with the wax? Oh, yeah. So, so like is it like a if it's you a want to get it going faster, or is it? Yeah, it's a shuffleboard wax. Wow. <laughs> you edit that out. No, it's fine. So a shuffleboard wax, which we include with every board we send out, and you just put a little bit in the gutter in front of you. So each time before you shoot, you can rub your button in that wax, and yeah, it just makes it uh, it just makes it slide that much easier. My, I think mine would have been easier. Right. Yeah. It's like that. So what we're going to do, right off the hop, we are going to implement uh, the first um, the first handicap thing that I suggested. I'm going to take one of my eight buttons and I'm going to set it to the side. So we are now playing eight buttons versus seven, which means you get the first and last shot every round. So you're giving me an advantage here. I'm, I'm trying to you're be trying nice. To. I'm trying to be nice. Doesn't happen a lot. You so were just, trying. Right? <laughs> All right. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? So we're obviously the, the goal is to get it. Yep. So. Give it one more try. Yeah. That's another one of the things we talked about is is letting new people take mulligans. Right. All right. Now I said I was gonna try to be nice, but you're making it difficult because with that shot, oh, now you have to make contact with mine. Nice. So the goal is not to not only to, to get yours off, but to get mine in. Yes. And a question that we get a lot is, do you have to make direct contact? So you can hit either one of mine. It doesn't need to be the most recent one that I shot. And you are allowed to hit yours, combo through yours, into mine. I'm not saying you should, but that okay. would be a legal shot. But if you hit your own and you don't hit mine, you'd lose both of yours. Right on. <laughs> and 
It did not touch mine. It did not touch yours. So you get the honor of pulling your disc off there the board. You go. All right. And you just keep it in the gutter? Yeah. Okay. So once they're all, you start with then them here, out. once they're all shot. That's how you keep track of when the round is done. That's all right. So that's a 20. It's going to go in there, and I'll explain the scoring at the end of the first round. Unorthodox, but effective. Now I have to make contact with yours. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Now you're making this difficult for me because I have to make contact with yours somehow. Oh. See, and, I, and this is unintentional, but this is good. Yeah. Now what I'm going to try to do, and I mean, I would have the option to just shoot my button off, but I'm not going to do that because this looks like a fun challenge. I am going to try to hit this one and have this one hit that peg and then hit you. Now, it's either going to work or I could lose all my buttons or whatever. I'm okay with you taking that. Shoot straight off the board. Now the upside is you have last shot. So. so the way the scoring works, when the round is done, anything in here counts as 20. And then what's left on the board is 5, 10, 15. If it's touching a line, even barely touching that line, it counts as the lower. So if we were going to add up points, I've got 20, 35, 35 to 5. At least I got something on the board. There you go. And look at the right side. Alright, so now we are going to, we're going to add uh, another mulligan or another. Yeah, yeah. and I mean we're still going to continue with the mulligan, so I'll let you do do-overs if you, if you really blunder a shot. Um, the rule we like to play by is, as long as you didn't hit anything on the board with your shot, yeah. you can pull it back and do it over if you want. Okay. Um, but what we're going to do now, we're still going to do 8 versus 7, but I'm going to combine a couple of handicaps here. I am not allowed to shoot directly into the center hole if you don't have a board on, if you don't have a button on. Okay. If you have a button on, the rules are the same, I have to hit your button, but if you don't have a button on, I can't shoot straight to the 20, I have to hit a peg. To try and hit. Yeah, so if I don't hit a peg, call it bounce corbinal. If I don't hit a peg, it's not a valid shot. I lose my shot. Right. But you still start because you've got eight buttons to my side. And that, what did you say before about if you, for a mulligan, that's only in like recreation. Like if you were playing oh. in a competition, that's off the table. Everything I'm talking about here is off, off the table. The table. Yeah. 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 I'm going to give you a mulligan on that one. Okay. Nice. So when we talked about mulligans, what I suggested, like it, it's really handy for brand new people or for little kids. Yeah. So, but I said the nice thing is it's scalable because you can start by saying you can have unlimited mulligans. Right. And then as you get a little bit better, I can say, hey, start okay, you get away. you get two mulligans around or one mulligan around and start yeah putting a little more positive pressure on you. Yeah. So aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I would suggest her up a little. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Okay, well. There you go. Shot. If I were you, I'd come from here. Yeah, and when we're and out, try to catch an angle. Yeah. See, this is. I gotta get my. Make sure to keep half my glue as maximus on here. We. Uh, Oh, we did a uh, we did a video, and the title of it was "Get Your Ass Behind Yourself." Yeah, and it was all about how to maximize your range of motion. I had no problem with that. <laughs> walking ah. out, walking around with a big old club. Oh, you see that? That little tip of like being as close. close to the thing is good because before it's like a. Like, I would hit it and I think wherever my hand would go, it would get right closer to my hand. Yep. 
The other thing with that is if you're way far back, then your finger's got a lot of velocity and it hurt your finger now. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. 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 And, and I mean, ultimately, you need to be able to play for hours on end, right? In order to feel, in order to feel fulfilled, there's a question I've got. The big coconut really kind of like, there you go. Yeah, I feel cuter. Try that again. Yep, go ahead. Nice. Are handy. Yeah. Oh, I did you dirty there. Well, no, it's uh, kind of posted, so yeah, you're going to want to catch it on this side of that button to try to come this way. Or that. That works too. <laughs> I'm sure I was going to put some more juice in the can. So when there's ah. two. When there's two, do you have to hit? You can hit any of mine you just have you to want. hit one. Yep. And no pressure, but if you can knock one of mine off and keep yours on, you'll win the round. Try that again. <laughs> come a little wider. So I'd, I'd come from here and try to catch it on this side. So the goal is to drive this one into that one. Um, and that so <laughs> you need to. You needed to take one of mine off and keep yours. Okay. Um, well, I, I was just being nice. Oh! Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's play one more round like that. So it's... Uh, I'm, okay. I'm okay with the growth and development. There you go. We'll play one more round like that. And then I have yet another handicap that we didn't cover in our video that we're going to throw it here. And this should be great entertainment for you. But one more round like this first. Okay. So you get to start. Okay. Same thing. Uh, I have to hit a peg if it's an open board. You get mulligans. Or just put it right in the gutter. That works. I appreciate and that. I, and I put more uh, more wax on it. Wax on it. Is that touching the line? It is. So it lives. So, oh, because it's going to be in the center. Yeah, it's, right. as long as it's at least touching that line, right. it counts as a valid shot. If that was any further this way, it would, it would come off or yeah. be a mulligan. Um, generally, you don't go to the center hole unless you have to. Nice shot. And that's a 20. You get to yeah. pull that out, drop it in the cup. Thanks to the mulligans. Woo! <clears throat> we could do that. Who's that song, Thanks for the Memories? We could do a Thanks for the Mulligans song. It could be. Is it a country song? Uh, I don't know. Oh. Um, red Jumpsuit Apparatus. Uh, thanks for the Memories. I know. Yeah. Maybe we should sing it a little longer. I don't think I should. <laughs> I don't think I should. Are those new? These 20 holders? Yeah. Um, no, they're been... just like an option. Yeah, they're an yeah. accessory. They're nice. They're not. Uh, they're not 100% essential, but they're really nice. Yeah. That way, because um, without them, sometimes uh, people don't realize how many 20s are off there and it creates confusion where yeah. now we very easily look and say, well, I've got three, you've got one. That's Especially our... Especially if you're competitive. Right. Yeah. And there's something super satisfying when you get a 20 and you just like slam dunk. Like right when there. it's a really satisfying one. Was that a 20? No, it wasn't. Oh, you I were was just, just, I was just demonstrating. Giving me credit. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in that case, you had 120, I had 60, and you had 40. All right. So, 20, 20. Was yeah, so 15, All right. 20, 40. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm going to give you the ultimate equalizer, but I'm taking my eighth button back. Okay. At least for this round, I'm taking my eighth button back. Full disclosure, I'm right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot with my left hand, and I am not ambidextrous. All right. So, you go ahead, 
Maybe this will be the first game we run through. Um, okay. Yeah. Try that again. You still get the mulligans, I'm okay. not playing, I'm not playing bounce. Okay. Nice. Isn't that satisfying? Yeah, ah. slam it in there. Alright, now. I always set it with my right hand. Where every once in a while, Reed and I will do this if we're bored, like, in Japan. Oh, let's play. and we both play left-handed. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I would come here. All right. Or here, but probably there is a... I was going to turn it to shoot it straight in. There you go. You almost drained a 20 out of that. Yeah. You have to hit mine. Just checking to make sure you're paying attention. I, I tried. You passed. So oh, that... Ooh. That's tough. So when you're... When you were hitting a shot... Because yours ended up there. Yep. And I hit it, it didn't have to get in the center. Nope. Because it was wherever it landed after hitting. Yeah, that's another thing that creates confusion. People sometimes will try to combine the two uh, valid shot rules and think that they have to hit the opponent's button and it has to end up in the center. Right. But it's, yeah, there's one valid rock shot rule for one situation. Yeah. One valid shot rule for the other situation. Right. Or a handful of all Sideline, it's off. Yeah, it's off. You take it off so it doesn't interfere with future shots. I think you might be right. Your prediction that you were going to win this round. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we need a rematch. I that 25. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 25 for you. Zero for me. Just make that noted on the camera. Right. And just disregard the mulligans and the left-handed shots. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I can see somebody tuning in just at that yeah. point and going, yeah. I thought this Tracy guy was, was supposed, supposed to be a decent player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my stare. Yeah. I want to hit the stick. Yeah. yeah look at that. Not intentional. Yeah. I normally don't admit that, but as a left handed <laughs> shooter right now. Are you still shooting left? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's not fair. Shooting up. What do you mean that's not fair? No, because that was a good shot and I was left handed. Oh. Try it this way. Yeah. Try a different, uh, different alleyway. Yep, there you go. You get, a glue get right your posture yeah. beside behind yourself. Nice. Okay. See? It's almost like Daniel. tips help. Yeah. Oh! We have a rule in our house. This is not a crokinole rule. This is a rule in our house. If you sink a 20 for your opponent, you have to take it out. And put it in the other place. You have to put it in your own cup. Ah, perfect. So then it still counts as yours, but I have to look at that and feel shame. It's a scar. For the Yes, for the rest of the round. 
Somebody will drop a like, 20 for the opponent, and then everybody just sits there and waits for the shooter to pull it in. Yeah, okay, fine. All right. And it's like Paul Brown used to say on the face to face where the missed appointments would stay red because it's like a scar. Yep. On the counter. Exactly. You know when shooting left handed gets really tough is when there's just an awesome, like just a really fun shot that sets up that you're just really, you want to hit with your right, right hand, hand yeah. and you can't, then it's like, oh. I'm going to have to say I feel for you, but. So, I'm going to hit this off. Yeah, you do. In the interest of time, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of mulligans on this, because <laughs> this. No. One more try. Yeah. Just for giggles. That would be the other thing with mulligans. Sometimes you would say, okay, you get one mulligan per shot, like you're not gonna. Right. Yeah. The idea, and, I mean. Right, when you're. So it's not like you get like five, you might get a couple. Yeah. I would say, like, the, to me, the idea of modifying the rules is that you want to make changes to make it fun for everybody at the table. Yeah. That, that's the idea. Right. And if everybody's sitting there waiting for one person to try the same shot 17 times. Yeah, it's not as fun. Yeah, it's not as fun, so. All right, do we want to do one more round, left versus right, and uh, sure. call it a match? I think so. Yeah, you'll, you'll feel fulfilled as a human? I feel partially completed. I'm waiting for that sense of fulfillment. Oh, okay, you want to win another round. All right. Well, we'll see. Kick us off. Okay. You won one round left-handed, so. Nice. Well, we'll just drop the left-handed part. Of the okay. So what, what happened to that one? I didn't touch yours. Oh, no, right. So, yeah, not a valid shot. I should have called that. That was good. You did in your head. Just not really. I did, actually. So that... You're fine, you hit mine. Yeah, but if it goes off and comes back on, if it made it off, then it's off. Yeah. Um, if it goes off, comes back on, that button has to go off because it was dead. But any damage that it created would stay. Right. So if that had come back on, bumped yours into the 20, it would count as a 20. But then the other button. This one would come off. Right. Yeah. So the damage rule, I always say, is either your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on uh, the bounce of the button. So you take that one, get that one right, right out of your road, yeah. Nice, other than that part of that. Simon would call that a flipper. Yeah. Right, why did I pull that? You should pull in your other one. You're like the Prince of No, I still got a oh, shot here. Oh, man, I thought that was me. It, yeah, I, I need to get all three years off and drop a 20 to tie. Hey. So I think you're okay. With my expectations for him. Well, that was pretty close. I thought, it might, I thought I could get the double. But, uh, yeah. That was good. So you've got 30 to my 10. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Nice. Well, thanks for playing. Yeah, no problem. We'll do that for sure. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching if you made it this far. And again, you think no Proconol shirt means Barney. Yeah. Proconol shirt means Jeremy. And if you think we did a great job, let the boss know and you might, you might get a raise. You might get a raise. Yeah. Right. And if we, not, we might give you a drive back to Waterloo. And if not, then keep your opinions <laughs> to yourself. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day.